The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, welcome, everybody. This is Kurt Frankenberg, um, the author of The Blueprint and uh, uh, founder of Radioactive Trading. And we're going to be getting started here in just a moment, right on the hour. Uh, I'm doing a bit of a sound check right now. I just want to make sure that everybody could hear me. So if you would, please um, <coughs> use that uh, question uh, pod there to, uh, to send me in a loud and clear. And if you uh, don't hear me, uh, I guess I'll have to try something else because I won't know. <laughs> oh, oh, very good. Okay, Glenn says loud and clear. Mary says good sound. Yupper says Doug. Thank you. Uh, Ernest says yes. Very good. Okay, we've got just a minute or two before we get started. Uh, I wonder who is coming from the furthest away. I'm here in Palmer Lake, Colorado, right in the middle of the country, mountain time. And uh, I wonder who's uh, who's coming from uh, either coast. We've got Mary from Dallas. Okay, good. Who else we got today? Oh, come on now. I know there's uh, over two dozen of you <laughs> on the line already. Ted's from Boston. Very good, Ted. Good to see everyone. We can get started in just a moment. Ernest is from Chicago. Ron is in the Sahara, uh, and if you're for real in the Sahara, you might be our winner for the farthest away. Akron, Ohio, says Doug. L.A. says C.W. Florida for Keith. South of you in New Mexico, says James and June. Hi, James and June. Yeah, we've seen James and June in a number of these webinars. Thanks, guys, for coming again. <coughs> Johnstown, Colorado. Hey, we got, uh, I guess that's the award for the closest. Thank you, Janice. Very nice. I'm not even sure where Johnstown is. I live in Colorado. I'm not sure where that is. Okay, let's give it another minute or two because the room is still filling up. Um, I think our, our winner is going to have to be Ron from the Sahara Desert. <laughs> uh, okay, near Loveland and Fort Collins. Got it. Lafayette, California, uh, says Francis. All right, gang. It's true, says Ron. Okay, he is in the Sahara Desert. All right, Ron, you win. <laughs> I don't know what you win. We don't have a, a special prize for who's coming from the furthest away, but uh, maybe we should do that sometime. All right. Uh, folks, what, what kinds of occupations are represented here today? We've got, uh, oh gosh, I saw a whole lot of dentists on the, uh, online a few weeks ago. Piles and piles of dentists, and, and uh, I thought that was kind of remarkable. I guess my name is getting around in dentist circles. Oh, and it sounds to me like my good friend Mike Tupka has joined us. Is, uh, are you there, Mike? Yes, sir, I am. I was just handling a phone call right before the presentation, helping one of our attendees log on, make sure that that was all squared away before I joined you here and turned on the sounds. So I am present now, and I started recording when you put up the marvelous screen. So we have this uh, started for us, and we'll be able to post this presentation uh, probably early tomorrow. Very good. Okay. We've got a lot of uh, occupations represented today. We've got uh, a musician. We've got a horse trainer. We've got uh, a number of retired persons. Uh, let's see. We've got um, an investor and software engineer. Uh, we've got a stock trader. We've got a retired in internet entrepreneur. Mm. Um, very good. A software developer. Do you need help? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, the gang over on the East Coast, the Power Options folks, they're, they're pretty good programmers. Uh, retail online, says Ernest. Okay. I'm going to hold out for maybe two more um, two more occupations, and, and uh, we'll get started. Room is still filling up there, Mike, but uh, I did, we did say that we'd start it on the hour, and it's actually two minutes past, so I guess we better get, get with it. Okay. Let me dock my panel here. Any other occupations you guys want to share just before we get rolling? Three, two, one. Not in a talkative mood today, I guess. Okay. Oh, we got a couple in healthcare. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, Mike, I'm glad that you could join me. I thought I would show something straight out of the gate, okay? Uh, because the, the last time I, I did a presentation here on Tuesday, uh, I showed income method number five and four, right? But the buildup was excruciating. You know, I, I uh, took a lot of time. I built it up, and uh, I also don't think everybody got 
number five. I don't it's think a tough one. understood number five. Yeah. And so we're, we're going to do number five again today. Uh, Mark's a certified personal trainer. Thanks, Mark. Um, but uh, we're going to do that again. But we're going to, uh, uh, straight out of the gate, I'm going to share one of my riskless trades, okay? And uh, a riskless spread trade. Now, Mike, uh, the, oh, and Roy says that was genius. Thank you, Roy. Uh, I think you're going to dig this one too, okay? Because I'm going to show you uh, the Marvel um, uh, situation that, from actually a couple of years ago. Um, a little less than two years ago. Uh, so, uh, Mike, why don't we just dive in? Does does my screen show? Does it say marvelous? The Marvel Radioactive Profit Machine. We're still there. Yes, we are, sir. Very good. Okay, thanks, Roy. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so let me go ahead and and uh, pull this up now. Uh, uh, I should mention that I don't have permission to use the Marvel Universe of Characters to endorse radioactive trading. But then again, that's not what I'm doing. I'm showing my devotion as a fan. I grew up with these guys. Uh, so Wolverine there and Dr. X, they're not telling you uh, for real uh, that radioactive trading is great. But you know what? It's great. And <laughs> what we're going to do is look at a, um, an RPM that I did with Marvel. Okay. Now, I had uh, done a, a play in uh, early 2009 that uh, did very well with Marvel. Uh, I think it had a, a oh like a five percent return or something like that four four point eight percent return, um, <clears throat> but then after doing that play and after making that return, Mike, I had an extra hundred shares because of the way that I had done it. Uh, if that makes sense or not, the, the play is over and done with. I've I've made a profit right, but I've got another hundred shares. Of yeah. Stock. You and you had 100 shares that you didn't like get called away, and it was actually trading below the current cost basis from the other adjustments you had done on the previous RPM, correct? That's correct. Now, my purchase price, this is not an adjusted pur purchase price. This was my purchase price for Marvel uh, for these 100 shares, all right, because we kind of separated it. Uh, <clears throat> my purchase price was $31.71, and at the time, the stock was trading at 35.98. Now I could go ahead and liquidate at that point, right then, Mike. For how much? Well, at that point, Kurt, you could have uh, taken a decent profit there, about four dollars and twenty-seven cents, if my quick math is correct. <laughs> You're right. Okay, yeah, it would have been four dollars and twenty-seven cents. But I decided that instead of doing that, I wanted to open a new uh, radioactive profit machine, and of course, this one was going to be able. Uh, to be bulletproof right away. Now, the reason I'm sharing this is that there may be a lot of folks on the line, like there were last week, uh, whose stock is up. Their stock is up already, and uh, they may not know what to do with it. You know, we don't know when the end of the bull market may be. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <clears throat> Mike, what I did was this. I converted it into married put, and I'm going to go ahead and show the five line setup of the radioactive profit machine. The five lines are this. Uh, the amount that you purchase the stock for, right? The amount that you purchase an in the money far out in time put option. Now this was I think June 9th, uh, it was June something, 2009. Okay, mm -hmm. and the January 2010 $40 puts were trading at 650. Well, that that makes a total investment of the two instruments of uh, $38.21. But I have a guaranteed exit of $40. So, Mike, what's my risk in this trade? Well, your risk now is negative. You were able to purchase this 40 strike put at 650. Um, and the stock was trading at, I believe, 3598 at this time. But because of your cost basis of 3171, your total invested amount is below your guaranteed exit price at 40. So you, a you have a negative maximum risk or what we would call a bulletproof position. Right, it's it's a guaranteed gain. Now, uh, a lot of folks are going to look at this and they're going to say, "Now, Kurt, come on, uh, you could have taken 427 like right now, but instead you're trading that off for a dollar 79." Well, yes and no. What I'm doing is I I had 427 uh, guaranteed if I sold it, but mm -hmm. Mike, uh, if I hold it. And not sold it, but I hold it. If I hold it, uh, then I also run the risk of giving all that back, right? That's exactly right, Kurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I run the risk of giving it back. Now, 
uh, essentially I still have upside potential, but I have taken away any possibility of losing. And uh, in fact, I'm guaranteed a buck seventy-nine. Now, a lot of folks will say, "Well, four twenty-seven for one seventy-nine. That's not a good trade." Well, uh, watch on. Okay, <laughs> I think you're going to dig it. Uh, here's the uh, the entry in the Power Options software. Okay, and uh, and uh, now I've got this familiar hockey stick graph, uh, but there's something peculiar about it. What's what's a little different there, Mike? Well, normally if we open a married put position, we'll have an area of red or an area of loss, a small uh, limited risk position where we might be risking 4%, 5%, or 6%. We don't see that here. We don't have a break even. We're guaranteed a profit of 4.7% with the possibility of still unlimited upside. That's right. I want to call everybody's attention to this. We still have a max profit that's theoretically infinite. Okay, uh, that stock can go up as high as she wants to, but what she can't do is she can't lose me any money. Okay, I've got a guaranteed return of 4.7 percent. Okay, now we're going to show a riskless spread trade. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to show you this right out of the gate, and then later on we'll show you two more riskless spread trades. Okay, and they'll be different. All right, there's. Uh, Ten different ways, Mike, that uh, that I adjust or that I uh, set up a trade so that it takes income. Okay, right here we're going to show number six, selling a bear call spread for credit, and you've got to do this properly and you've got to do it in the right context. But in this case here, Mike, uh, I sold an August forty dollar call for dollar seventy eight while simultaneously buying. A uh, an August forty five dollar call for twenty eight cents. So, uh, what is the situation after that? Well, at this point, you've generated a credit of a dollar fifty. That's taken into your account right now. But you sold a forty call, so you have an obligation to deliver shares of stock at forty. But you also have a long forty five call. So that looks like a bear call spread, and typically what we'd refer to as a bear call credit spread in this position. That's right. Okay. Now, uh, what's the problem with the bear call spread? <laughs> Most folks online, if, if you're spread traders, you know the problem with it. Uh, but Mike, let's, let's just give it a, a rundown. Well, number one, it's directional. So we're expecting the stock, yes. if we traded this just by itself, we're expecting the stock to stay below $40 per share. In that case, both calls would expire worthless, and you just keep the $1.50. The real problem, of course, is if the stock goes up, and if it happens to go up above 45 with a standard vertical spread, you're risking more than you can potentially make. So you could actually wipe out previous gains if the stock suddenly spiked up to 45 and you hit the maximum loss on the spread. Right. If the stock is at 45 or higher, uh, I've taken on an obligation to deliver it at 40. Mm -hmm. Now, thankfully, I've also got a, the privilege to buy at 45. So if that stock goes to 70 points, right, uh, I'm not going to have to go on the open market and buy the stock for 70 and then deliver it for 40. Okay, uh, I'm going to have the privilege to buy that stock at 45. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so my maximum loss here then is uh, five dollars because it's a five dollar spread, and I've taken a credit on the front end, so uh, that makes for a total maximum loss of 350 dollars, right? Yes. Um, and so that's how much I could lose. On the other hand, the most that I could possibly make I've already taken, and that's 150. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that is a risky proposition. But remember, it's in the context of owning the stock already. Hmm. And if you recall, uh, my cost basis for both the stock and the put come to a figure less than forty dollars. So if I've obligated myself to sell at forty dollars, so what? Okay. Take a look here. Here's our uh, riskless. I'm sorry. Here's our. Yeah, it is riskless. Mm -hmm. Our riskless position, okay, where we have the stock, and we also have a put option guaranteeing that stock below a certain point. So it can't, can't possibly lose me any money, but still has the opportunity to gain. Now, watch this flat line at the bottom here, Mike. I'm going to superimpose this other position on top, and boom, what just happened? Well, we've increased the guaranteed payout on the downside, the worst case scenario now is that you would only make 8.9% on the position. And you've gotten a little bump there uh, between 40 and 45, but we still have an infinite maximum profit potential. 
Isn't that something? You see, uh, if if I deliver that stock for the forty dollars that mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> that it's insured at, and that the cost basis is less than, all right. If I deliver it for the forty dollars, well, I've made a profit there. And guess what? Uh, my uh, put option that's far out in time. That's part of the key here is my put option is far out in time. That put option is not going to lose value as quickly. And guess what? If if the stock goes way, way up, even if that put option is losing value, my $45 call option, which I've received at a credit, hmm, that takes over. Okay? And uh, uh, this isn't my, uh, I didn't uh, draw this with a pen and paper. Okay? okay this is the, the power option software. Uh, taking all the numbers, crunching them, and putting in a visual format. Mike, is there any way I can possibly lose with this? Well, if the stock falls, you won't make the, you know, you won't go into those ranges of the infinite maximum profit, but boo-hoo, you'll only be guaranteed to make 9%. Right. <laughs> uh, and let's be fair, it's 8.9%. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> but, the, but the fact is, yeah, uh, I've uh, taken back a lot of what I um, risked. Uh, or shouldn't say risk, but remember, I I could have made 427 just by selling the stock, and, and now it says I'm I'm going to make 327 at least. I'm going to make at least 327 no matter what happens. Now let me remind everybody, this uh, stock is insured clear out to January 2010, but it's June now, okay? And when those uh, when those call options expire. Um, then uh, we're going to do just fine. Uh, Glenn wrote in, what is the software that does this? Glenn, the best software in the world for trading options is Power Options. Uh, that's the company that Mike represents, and, and we'll push out a link to you uh, for, for a free trial of it a little later on. Okay. All right. Uh, on June 22nd, then, I opened this RPM, Radioactive Profit Machine, uh, which is my, my name for a married put trade that's put together according to very strict and very, uh, um, what should I say, uh, very specific criteria. Okay, I opened this on June 22nd, and then uh, subsequently sold the bear call spread for dollar and fifty cent credit. Okay, now Mike, what I actually did on uh, August 6th, the stock had a bump down, and as I sometimes do, I closed the short side of that spread. I closed only the short call, not the long call. Okay? And it took me 45 cents. Now if I've received $1.50 and then I pay out 45 cents, what, what is my uh, net? Do I, still, do I still have a gain? Yeah, so you still have a, a profit, a premium in your account on that already riskless position of $1.05. Okay, and this is the sort of thing you can do when you have a riskless position. Is you can you can play like this. Um, my thinking was that if Marvel did spike because there was some uh, takeover talk, okay, if Marvel did spike, I would be long the stock and I'd be long the forty-five dollar call. Oh, <laughs> and that would be a nice double dip, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, the fact is that that didn't happen. Okay, uh, I'm just saying that I positioned that way. Okay, but it didn't cost me anything. See, I, I received a dollar fifty credit. I gave back forty five cents of it, so I've been paid a hundred and five dollars to to continue to sit on this thing. Oh, and Mike, it's it's uh, August that that expiration happens. By the way, could I could I sell the August calls again if the stock went up? Of course, yeah. You still have the opportunity yeah. to sell against the calls, and since you own the stock, you're not doing anything naked. You have that covered, and you can still generate more premium. Yeah, and there's more months between then and, and January as well, so so it could have happened again. Mm -hmm. Here's what did happen. All right, uh, I'll go ahead and say this: this is the uh, uh, the actual thing that happened. The long forty-five dollar call expired worthless uh, on the third Friday in August because the stock did uh, stay flat for a little bit. But what it was doing is it was consolidating, and, and while it was consolidating, I wanted to have the opportunity to catch. Uh, the run up. Um, what did happen was at the end of that month, on August 31st, uh, Marvel uh, announced that it was going to be bought by Disney <laughs> for over four billion dollars, mm -hmm. and so my shares went up to forty-eight dollars and forty-one cents. Now remember, the cost basis for the shares themselves had been thirty-eight twenty-one. Okay, so uh, I had also. Uh, pulled in some money with the uh, income method, and during the time that the income method was in force, I couldn't possibly lose. 
and I still could have participated in this upside move. Is that something? How about that? Yeah. <laughs> I, for, so for two months, I didn't have any risk. I just had a position that I could uh, hold and play. Uh, now, the put option did go down. It, it went down to 30 cents um, for the put. Okay, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm okay with that because it only cost me, what was it, 650 Yes. Okay, it cost me 650 uh, I made a buck five for doing income method number six, and then uh, the stock itself goes up by over 10 points. Okay, so it ended up being a 30.2 percent uh, return on investment rather than a 4.7 percent. And again, the reason for this is because I'm able to hold the position through uh, earnings announcements or uh, or uh, uh, other news items that drive the price up high, while I'm sitting uh, there being bulletproof. Okay, so who else wants to be bulletproof? <laughs> All right, uh, Mike, we're going to go ahead and get into our regular presentation now and show income methods uh, number five and, and three today. We're going to do five and three, not five and four. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, plug in a little bit more time for questions and for uh, uh, interaction. Right this second, as I'm changing, uh, <clears throat> I would like to uh, ask, what is the involvement of our audience? What are you doing right now with radioactive trading? Okay. Uh, did you pick up the sketch, for example, a free white paper that shows the setup of the RPM, the radioactive profit machine? Um, are you coming to webinars? Well, obviously you're coming to webinars, but have you been to more than one? Okay. Uh, have you been checking out the YouTube videos? Uh, have you been thinking about buying the blueprints, or do you already own the blueprints? Okay. Let's uh, take a moment to um, fill that out, and uh, Mike, I'll pull up our other presentation, the main one. Sounds good. Oops. Did I, did I blow it? No, nope, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Great. Let's give it another ooh, 10 seconds or so on that poll. And uh, we've got a lot of folks coming to webinars. That's marvelous. Okay. Um, and, and I think these webinars are instructional. We, we do, it's like 98% um, education and about 2% promotion. At the end of the webinar, I'll just go ahead and, and say it. At the end of the webinar, I'm going to do a commercial <laughs> for my book. Uh, but other than that, uh, we're, we're just going to be teaching you meat and potatoes, how, how to uh, make some money with, with your stocks. Okay. All right, 38% just got the sketch. Uh, I'm going to recommend that uh, we bring that figure up to 100, okay, because just that setup can change your picture forever. Mike, would you agree with that statement? Just I'm, that, just the sketch. Go ahead. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, it'll take you, it'll force you, I should say, or get you thinking about a different approach to investing that you might be used to. Instead of focusing on the return or focusing on the potential for the return and the probabilities, which can go against you, what you're looking at is a way to enter in a position where you're guaranteed not to risk more than five or six percent on any one position, but still have the potential for unlimited upside. Right. Uh, Mike, I'm going to mention a little bit about this. We've got 27% have been checking out the YouTube videos. Uh, if you get a chance, go ahead and, and go to uh, uh, YouTube and, and uh, just search for radioactive trading. You'll find it. Uh, and uh, there's just quite a bit up there, a lot of educational materials that's out there for free. Uh, we've got 14% uh, uh, that already own the blueprint, and yet they're still coming to these webinars for free. Why would that be? Well. I think it's because uh, we offer quite a bit of uh, education, and uh, a lot of it's current. Now, now on Tuesday, I did a, I, I showed a trade that I uh, uh, only just uh, completed here recently, um, and uh, today I'm going to be showing a little bit more antiquated trades. Uh, you know, something from uh, the ending. Well, I think it was December of last year, uh, December 2010, that, that we finished that one. So. Um, and uh, last thing, look, Mike, we've got nearly four times as many people coming to the webinars as are contemplating buying the blueprint. <laughs> well, uh, I guess, you know, that old saying, you know, uh, they won't buy the cow if you give the milk away for free. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, folks, uh, there's quite a bit more cow where that came from. Uh, the stuff that we show is, uh, is good, but it's, um, it is the free stuff, you know. There's, there's uh, quite a bit more uh, to be had. 
uh, from the blueprint. So uh, think about it. Let's go ahead and hide this uh, mic and, and we'll get rolling. Um, does it say bulletproofing with the income methods? Yes, sir, it does. Very good. Okay, we're going to be sharing how to bulletproof with the Inca methods. Uh, I thought it, it, we're going to skip the intro, Mike, because I thought uh, rather than telling them who we are, we might show everybody what we can do for them. And uh, I think we did that real quick with the Marvel example. Mm -hmm. um, here, here's just a real quick introduction. Mike represents uh, power options on the East Coast. Uh, like I said before, the best uh, firm for searching out these kinds of trades and also uh, adjusting them and, and uh, uh, looking at the before and after picture. I wouldn't trade greater actively. Well, that's a lie. I, I will <laughs> trade greater actively without you. <laughs> but now that I've found you, now that I know how to use uh, your tools for right after trading, uh, I would really, really, really rather not use a pen and paper and a calculator like I had been. Uh, or any other stuff out there. The Thinkorswim software, eh, good, but not good enough. Uh, the Options Express software, eh, good, but not good enough. Uh, Power Options is the best way to go. And then, of course, uh, me, my name is Kurt Frankenberg. I've been teaching the married put method of investing and the invested trades within those married puts uh, for uh, nine years now. Okay? All right. So uh, please hold your questions to the end or to the places where we uh, ask you um, to, uh, to pose your questions. In this one, I'm going to make you a bold promise. I'm going to show you two more riskless spread trades that can capture much more premium and growth than a covered call can. Okay, and in fact, I'm willing to bet uh, that you're going to take a look back the, the last 12 months, and you're going to wish that you had done this sooner. These two plays are only two out of the 10 income method adjustments described in the blueprint. We just showed you one. Uh, this is going to be two more income methods. Okay, uh, we're going to show income method number five, the money net, and income method number three, the bulletproof vest. Okay, here's my promise. I'm going to show you one method for improving your potential returns better than selling cover calls, and another to where you can leave your upside potential open but make yourself invincible to a downturn, which is critical just before an earnings announcement or, or Mike, as we're moving upwards and not sure where the end of the uh, party is going to be. Uh, you know, we, we've been in a bull market for about two years now, and we're not sure uh, what's going to happen next. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're yeah we're going to take the top off. We're going to grab more than a covered call. If you're right about where a stock is headed, uh, you're going to see how uh, Mike and I sleep great at night. This is what we give away for free today. But in return, I'm going to ask for something from you. Okay? It said that if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Toward the end of this program, I'm going to point out the difference that knowing these two techniques means to you in terms of dollars and cents in just this one particular trade. okay? And I will have given you these strategies with no charge. If you feel as though I've given you something valuable, what I ask in return is that you at least think about picking up the blueprint okay, uh, at some point in the future. Okay, is that fair enough? Let me just get a reply from everybody uh, that, that uh, thinks that that's a fair deal. First exposure says Ted, glad you're here. Yup says Douglas. Yes, says Roy. Deal, says Ernest. Okay, great. Yes, yes, good, fair. Okay, yes. We got lots and lots. Okay, uh, great. Mike, I think it's kind of cool because we, are, we already, uh, Chuck says, fair enough. Uh, we already showed one riskless spread trade and I promised to show two more. Okay? okay? All right. Mike, everyone's, everyone's heard this saying, uh, cut your losers short and let your winners run, haven't they? I believe so. I, I hope so. I mean, yeah. anyone who's started to get into investing of any kind, stock investing, futures investing, even mutual fund investing, probably be, came across this axiom from the popular gurus and successful gurus that we know of. Right. Uh, and the fact is, we, we get told that, but we don't always get told how to pro uh, practically do that. Mm. For example, there's, there's an even more popular saying, buy low and what? Sell high. Yeah. <laughs> sure, just do that. Well, of course. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> well, uh, the, the problem is we just don't, we never know what the stock is going to do next, okay? So uh, while that sounds like a pat answer, uh, you'd think that uh, everybody would make money in the stock market. They would just, you know, buy low and sell high, all right? Uh, or just cut your losers short and let your winners run. But, Mike, um, there's actually a way to force yourself to do this one. I can't force myself to buy low and sell high. 
because prices move, and I don't know where they're going to move. Mm -hmm. But I can do this. I can make it so that my losers can't lose me too much, and my winners can just fly as high as they want to. We just showed an example with Marvel. What if we could guarantee that we would always do this? Okay. All right. Uh, Mike, I didn't do this poll, and I better real quick. I want to see what kinds of traders we've got. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just do that real quick. Okay, what kinds of options trading are we into? Uh, are we are we staying clear of options in the first place? Uh, are we doing covered calls, which I call the gateway drug? Uh, <laughs> put as many things as you do. Okay, if if you do more than one, uh, you know, uh, put yeah, I do covered calls and spread trades, or you know, whatever your mix is. Okay. Perhaps I shouldn't have put naked calls and puts. Perhaps I should have said covered calls and naked puts and put naked calls at the top of the spectrum. Okay, let's give this one just another few seconds because we're getting really responsive results, and I appreciate that from everybody. I'm glad that you're being so quick uh, about these polls. Um, the polls are really going to help uh, not just help Mike and I to guide the presentation, but they're going to help you in the sense of, uh, the Socratic method of teaching, right? Mm -hmm. Socrates used to ask his pupils questions, and those questions would engender even better questions within the mind of the pupil, and uh, they would they would learn a lot faster. Okay, let me close that and share the results. Uh, Mike, our winner today is spread trades, and that's good because I'm going to show two risk. Well, I've shown one. One. I'm going to show three <laughs> riskless spread. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've already done it so far. Uh, I'm going to show two two more riskless spread trades. Uh, the two percent said options mean no likey. I'm going to say uh, education is the cure for that. Okay, if you trade anything uh, and, and find that exciting, guess what? Trading options uh, is going to help you uh, keep your winners, um, you know, let your winners run and, and keep your losers short. It's on the right Cut way. Your losers short. Options yeah, done, done the right correctly. way. Yes. Yes, you can you can uh, crucify yourself with options if you uh, fail to understand leverage and and the proper strategies and setups. Okay, so spread trades is first place winner, cover calls is second place winner. Great, Mike. I'm going to show cover calls first, real quick. Okay. Very good. Uh, now, if it, if it was anything else, if it was anything else other than the stock market, if I said to you, Mike, I've got two choices. I've got one investment that. Uh, uh, entails quite a bit of risk. I've got to I've got to buy an asset and I've got to hold it, and I don't know what's going to happen to it. It may go down uh, even significantly, but I do stand to make about a three to five percent profit if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on the other hand, if I was to say, Mike, I've got another investment that uh, uh, there's great potential and the upside is completely unlimited, uh, and if I'm wrong. I could lose uh, three to five percent. <laughs> which of which of those choices sounds more sane to you? Well, I'd like to go with the one that risks less and has an infinite upside profit potential. Hey, even if it goes up a little bit and I just make a little bit of profit, at least I know I'm not risking more than three or five percent, as opposed to maybe risking ninety-five or ninety-six percent of what I invested. Right. Uh, when when you uh, buy a covered call, Mike, you are bullish, and, and the reason that you are bullish is because guess what? You're buying stock. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do it otherwise. You would not do a covered call trade uh, if you weren't uh, at least mostly bullish because uh, the biggest part of that trade is the ownership of stock. If you make uh, 3%, 5% on the premium when you sell a covered call and your stock loses 20%, that's not a happy thing. Okay, so you need to be bullish. Um, and uh, Mike, they say that it's safer. This isn't my graphic. Okay, I took this off of uh, uh, Options Express, and you can see similar things in, in all kinds of different uh, free publications and fee-based uh, seminars and, and uh, books. All right, but uh, uh, it, it correctly says that you're bullish here. It kind of incorrectly, in my thinking, says that it's safer risk-wise. Mike, well, you know what? You're, you've been the uh, director of options education over at Power Options for what is it? Nine years now. Eight going on nine, yes, sir. Eight, eight years, and uh, going on nine. And uh, have you found that um, that folks that talk to you, you talk to people every day that are options traders? Have you found that um, uh, trading covered calls is a fairly safe strategy, or or would you say differently? By itself. Just using covered calls in your portfolio over the long term, you find that really it's not a safer strategy. 
And the reason why is because what most investors find is it works as a sorting machine. Now, if the market stayed neutral to flat, or if the market consistently moved up 3 or 5%, you would consider this a safer strategy. But we know that's not what happens. The market is not consistent. The market is very volatile. It fluctuates. And the stocks themselves fluctuate, even though the market might not be. What we see here is a situation where, hey, if the stock moves up and we're right, we'll make 2, 2.5, maybe 3%, maybe 4% return. That's great. But we're still running the risk of any sudden gap of 15%, 20%, early earnings warnings announcements, black swan events, which we've seen multiple of those over the past couple of uh, years, um, unfortunately. But if I yep. suffer a 20% loss, even if I'm using a stop loss and during a gap that gets violated, well, that just wiped out possibly 6 to 10 previous trades. I'm right back to square one. So this is not really safer. You're still taking on the full risk of investing in just stock positions. Right. And, and uh, uh, some of those black swan events that you mentioned, of course, are the, the, uh, the, the crash, you know, 2008. But what about the flash crash? Mm -hmm. uh, May 6, you know, where we had uh, uh, just just a, a, almost a thousand point decline in, in the Dow in, in just about 15 minutes. Right. <laughs> that was that was something else. And of course, it bounced back up. But uh, folks with stop orders in place, they got hurt. The stock went back up, but it went back up without them. Mm -hmm. um, well, look at this uh, limited reward. Would you go along with that? Do you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. This, we can manage it. I know some of the, the our covered call traders will say, oh, well, if it goes to your strike price or it goes above your strike price, you just roll the position and you keep increasing your profits. Well, if you let it go too far, you're paying more than you're collecting. You can't always roll logistically for a credit. And so you're getting just a little bit further behind. Sure, you can roll it, but it takes a lot of work. That's right. So, Mike, I, I got this crazy idea uh, back uh, about 10 years ago, and, and I was broke from trading the wrong way, <laughs> so I couldn't mm -hmm. implement it right away. I got this crazy idea about 10 years ago, and, uh, and I started writing about it and doing it. I, I got the capital together and started doing it in October of 2002. And uh, that was to start out with a risk that was very low. Now, I didn't invent the Mary Put position, but I did invent the way that I do it now which is to buy a put option six months away or more and uh, deep in the money. Not deep in the money, but uh, a strike or two in the money. Um, a, uh, oh gosh, there's a fellow that uh, as recently as four years ago, he was writing and saying, oh, you know, cover calls are how, how it is, you know, that's the way of the future, it's the thing to do. Mm -hmm. And never touch puts, I would never touch puts. And uh, uh, in the face of the math, and in the face of, you know, he came to one of my webinars, in the face of what's, uh, you know, true and right in front of his eyes, he decided to change his tune. And now he, he brands it his own and sells, uh, sells a strategy remarkably like mine. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, what he doesn't do is all the cool uh, uh, spread trades that I've learned over the last nine years to, to put in here. Okay. All right. So here we are. Uh, we still have a bullish outlook, right? Because mm -hmm. we're buying stock. Uh, I'll go along with this safer thing. But uh, the fact is, now we're unlimited. There's no way we can go wrong. All right. So uh, just before we uh, get into it, I want to find out uh, what uh, what our trading results were last year. Okay. Um, and and uh, from there, we're going to take and, and we're going to see if we can solve. Uh, the biggest problem, if 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 uh, if indeed uh, there is a problem. Okay, mm -hmm. right? so if if you're uh, absolutely ecstatic with your trading from last year, uh, say yes. I mean, piles of money. Uh, if if you're you know pleased, uh, then you would say I'm I'm happy, but I can stand to be happier. If you have mixed emotions, you've lo uh, won some, but your losers have brought it down. Why, why then? That's how you answer. Um, <laughs> Mike, I had a, a DJ that, that or not a DJ, a radio producer actually. Uh, that uh, produced my my radio show. It's your money. Mm -hmm. And he told me one. He told me one time. I'd rather take a physical beating than take a beating. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny, so I put that in there. And then uh, finally, trading is a mess. I'm about to throw in the towel. And for those of you that are joining us from outside the United States, throw in the towel means uh, quit. Is what it means. Okay, it's just a, a saying that we have here. Okay, and that's a minute, so let's go ahead and close and share the results. Mike, we had 0%, exactly 0% say I make piles and piles of money. We did have 26%, about one in four. About one in four of the people on the line uh, say that they, they were pleased with their trading results 
from last year, and it's actually very high. It's actually very high. Um, you know, we've seen that number in the teens. We've even seen it, seen it in single digits. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike we have. I've been doing this uh, a webinar like this for a number of years now, and and uh, yeah, we've seen that. <laughs> There's been times when we saw that at zero. Uh, you know, in 2008, uh, gosh, through about July of 2009, we sometimes we would see zero in that category. 47% mixed emotions, 13% uh, 30 unhappy, and 13% ready to quit. Okay. So no one made piles of uh, money. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> nobody said I made piles. One in four uh, were happy, okay, but the, they could stand to be happier. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask, what do you think the biggest problem is? Okay. What do you think the biggest problem is? Now, just give it some thought. Read all five. All right. Uh, do you think it's because you have more losers than winners? Okay. Uh, is it because your winners just plain don't make enough? Or is it that your losers lose too much and that's really the drain on your account? Uh, do you think it's because your timing stinks? I don't know. You know, my timing stinks too, but I make money. Uh, do, you, do you feel like, gosh, I'm just not spending enough time trading? Let's, uh, let's take a moment here and let's find out what the biggest, oh, conscious cause is. The biggest thing that you're conscious of. The biggest thing that you're certain it must be. We'll give it another few seconds. Three, two, one, and close. Okay, I'm going to share the results here, Mike. Uh, seven of ten said what? That our losers are losing too much. We're getting too far behind on that gambler's ruin curve where we suffer a 20%, 25% loss. We now need a 30% win to get back to break even. Just the uh, inconsistency in the market and maybe... Uh, Strange events that we can't control are causing us to lose too much. Right. You know, Mike, only one in ten said that it uh, blamed it on their timing, okay? And less than one uh, in ten uh, was concerned about losing more often than they win, okay? Uh, but the lion's share of the results are, are concentrated right there with first place, my losers lose too much. In second place, my winners don't make enough. Well, Mike? If, if, if we were able to uh, somehow handle that biggest cause, do you think that would help most people in the room? Well, mathematically, I think it would. Seven out of ten would be happier if they could just limit their losses. Okay, good. Mike, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, take a second right now. We're going to solve the biggest problem that most folks have in their trading, and then we're going to see a practical way to uh, achieve it. Okay? I'm going to jump over here right now into RadioactiveTrading.com, and uh, let me make this bigger. And we're going to look on the Resources tab. This is a free resource. Okay? Uh, just above that free resource, I'd like to point out the Power Options uh, tab here. If, if you want to click on that, you get yourself uh, uh, two free weeks of power options on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you decide after that that you want to supply your credit card information, you don't have to write hit right then. You just get it for free with your name and email address. But uh, uh, two weeks in, if you decide, man, this is great, you want to keep going, uh, and you supply your credit card information then, guess what? They will give you another two free weeks. So it ends mm -hmm. up being a month. All right, but here's the deal: the trade simulator tool. We're going to go to the trade simulator tool, and what this is is a random uh, string trading results. Okay, what are we looking at here, Mike? What's this about? Well, we're looking at a field where it's showing us a simulation of a trading record, and let's assume that when we're going to enter into a trading technique, and this is, it doesn't matter what the technique is, we're going to enter some trading results. We're going to set our target return at 10%, meaning if we hit a 10% gain, we're going to close our positions. At the same time, right. let's assume that we're using assumed insurance, such as a stop order, and if the stock or the position drops 10%, we'll get out. Now we're going to have a 50-50 probability of gain or loss, that's standard in the market. We're going to start with $10,000. Now what's shown below is a simulation of that approach. So if we were right 53 times out of 100, we were wrong 47 times, over on the right it shows us just a random flipping the coin. Heads we win 10%, tails we lose 10%, and after we go through the 100 trades, where might we stand up? Now this one is actually a pretty decent uh, record, a pretty decent simulation of wins and losses. 
yeah. over the 100 trades. The right. Not we ended up, uh, right. Over here on the uh, uh, right, of course, it's the ongoing, it's random, okay, uh, and it keeps an ongoing ledger. Um, and over here on the left, there's a summary of all the results. Now, what we have here is 53 wins, 47 losses. We took our 10,000. Thousand a point ran it up to twenty three thousand. Mike, could you write that down? Twenty three thousand six eighty six. Okay, you with, got it, Kurt. With fifty three winning trades. Oh, that's not the that's not the end result. That's the mm -hmm. high result. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the uh, end result was eleven thousand and forty six dollars. Okay, you know what? Just for grins and giggles, let's just run the simulation again a couple of times. Okay, uh, so here we have fifty one winning trades. Oh, Ooh. that's not so good. Uh, uh, with 51 winning trades, uh, still won more often than we lost, but ended up losing overall, starting with 10,000 and taking it down to 73.95. And look at that simulated low uh, value there, 4,300. Oh, well, this one's even worse. Yeah. Oh, geez, yeah. Well, this is from having more losses than wins. Okay, we started with $10,000. At one point, we might mistakenly believe we had a great system because we're up uh, 22 percent, uh, but I mean, it didn't hurt. Let's see if we can get more wins and losses again. This is random. Bear with me. Well, there's more wins and losses. <laughs> Look at this one, Mike. Mm. Took ten thousand dollars and turned it into nine thousand dollars. Along the way, the lowest point was twenty nine hundred. Seventy percent loss. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can find one more uh, overall winner. Okay. overall winner. Oh, here's another overall winner. That's just Took about 53, the same. Took uh, fifty three wins. Yeah, fifty three wins. Ended up with eleven thousand dollars and forty uh, eleven thousand forty six dollars, but along the way the low value was uh, sixty six hundred. So we uh -huh. had a thirty, what is that, thirty three percent drawdown. Okay, Mike, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a tiny tweak. Okay, let's go up to the target return. Oh, I'm sorry, it's like, let's bring it down six percent. Now let's roll that and see what happens. Oh, whoops. Uh, real quick, uh, Thomas uh, asked a question. I accidentally, as I was trying to reply to it, I clicked erase, so it deleted. Thomas wanted to know, is this before or after commissions? We're just running the simulation right now, Thomas, without commissions. If you wanted to, you see a text link there where you can add in your own commissions. Right underneath the starting mount, there's a use commissions link, and you can go ahead and put in your commissions and see how that would affect your gain and losses as well. But right now, we're just running the base simulation hey, what would happen if we were looking for a 10% gain, limiting it to a 10% loss, not including commissions, how would that pan out? Now we're going to compare it to what if we controlled the only thing we can control in the market, how would this work out for us? Right, and the only thing we can control, and, and I'm going to show the practical way of doing it here in just a minute, but we can control what the losses are. If we took it down to ten, uh, 6%, okay, Mike, look at this. We've got 46% winners in this, in this uh, string of trades. Mm -hmm. We began with a loss, and guess what? That was our lowest point the whole time. <laughs> mm. The maximum drawdown then was six percent in this in this whole deal, and and after a hundred trades, losing more often than we won, uh, we'd end up making twenty eight thousand, or, uh, or returning twenty eight thousand three hundred seventy seven. Let's run again. Wow, that. here we had a dismal trading record, terrible trading record, okay? Uh, almost two-thirds as many, you know, two-thirds uh, losses uh, and one-third wins, just about, okay? Uh, and still ended up making money. And that's something. And of course, it's no surprise that if you uh, make uh, wins more often than you lose, that uh, you'll, you'll make money, especially with a system like this. Okay? And what's interesting so, about this one, too, uh, and this isn't a guarantee, it's just a simulation, but what's interesting about this one is because of having three wins in a row, the lowest value you had was the amount that you started with. Once you've gotten up to a gain, perhaps, um, and now after the first three trades in that simulation, we saw that you know it never, went, it never dropped back below, excuse me, that $10,000 we started with. That's right. Now, Mike, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show the structure of an RPM, radioactive profit machine, okay? And um, here's how we put it together, okay? In fact, this was an actual real dollar trade. Uh, I'm going to show it with 100 shares and one put option, but could you do it with 200 shares and two put options, 500 shares and five put options? Could you do that? Yes, it's scalable, and it's based on it's your personal risk threshold and your portfolio amount. And in the past, Kurt, you had a trade where in eight days, 
uh, you returned, I believe, uh, I can't remember the percentage, but you had a great return on the GMCR position. Now, I followed you into that trade, but because my account size was smaller, I only did 100 shares in one put, where you had done 200 shares in two puts. Right, yeah. The percent return on that was 15%. It was Thank 15%. you. But it's, it's not the 15% that it, uh, uh, return in eight days that's impressive. What's impressive is we never could have lost more than single-digit amounts. I think we had like 7 8% at mm -hmm. risk in that particular trade. Uh, and so, you know, you, you flip a coin, you, you lose nickels, and you make dimes, you're going to make money overall. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show this setup here, Mike. Uh, Altera, I picked up uh, $27.35. And at the same time, a March 2011 $29 put option for $350, okay? Makes my total invested $30.85 per share with a guaranteed exit of $29. Now, the difference between my guaranteed exit and what I've put in is $1.85. And when you divide that by what I've put in, that's 6% of the position. Now, Altera was pretty volatile. Could I have traded Altera with a 6% trailing stop loss order? Of course you could have. But you might have had the, and we actually saw this, you might have had a point where you got stopped out of the Altera trade within a day or two days, maybe four days, maybe one hour, and then watch the stock move up after your order was triggered. Because once you put in that stop or that trailing stop, you can't control the timing of the exit. That's up to the electronics in the background. Right. Now, Mike, I want everybody to write down this figure, okay? Everybody, please write down this figure, $30.85. What did you say to me three years ago when I first showed you this position, this kind of position? Well, after okay. I said, wow, that seems like a weird last name. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> looking at this, when you were asking how to use the historical tools on power options to identify positions, I said, well, Kurt, I understand what you're doing. Yes, you have a limited risk, but I can't understand how you're going to make money in this. I don't know if this is going to be a profitable way to trade. You're not going to make a penny unless the stock's trading at $30.86 per share. You've added more than 10% of cost into a stock trading at $27.35. I don't, I don't get it. Right. And a lot of folks don't get it. And a lot of folks on the line right now might be thinking, uh, Frankenberg, you can't make a dime until that stock gets to 30 95 okay now we're going to refute that very soon okay I'm going to show how uh, not only did it not have to get to 3085 before I was making money but I actually guaranteed myself uh, a return long before it ever got there pretty cool mm -hmm. okay but uh, but that's the deal now here's here's uh, what I want to ask everybody in the line okay if this uh, had been done in your account, okay? If you were able to keep your winners from last year, but all of your losers, you didn't lose what you did, you only lost 6%, okay? Would it have changed how you answered in that poll earlier, okay? Would you have said, yes, I'm very happy with my trading results? Would you have been a darn side happier? Or can you honestly say, well, Kurt, no, uh, because I limited my losses to 5% or less, and I still lost money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just give that a few, few seconds here. Three, two, one, and presto, change it. How do I do this? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mike, uh, we've got 48% would have said, yes, I'm very happy. Did we have 48% saying, yes, I'm very happy? How many um, did we have? We had zero saying, yes, they made piles of money. 26% said they were happy, but could be happier. Right. And uh, 40, uh, so we got 48% would have said, yes, I'm very happy. 45% would have been darn sight happier. Mm -hmm. The 6% that limited your losses to 5% or less, you didn't have one trade last year that lost you more than 5%. And I don't mean 5% of your overall capital. I mean 5% of what you had in that particular trade. If, if that happened, really, and you really came out uh, behind last year, uh, the only way that that could be true is that you are over trading. Mm -hmm. You're over trading. You're probably uh, getting out of positions very, very quickly uh, and losing 5% one week, 5% another week, and so on and so forth. Okay? Because we are in a bull market and uh, it's really difficult 
really difficult to lose money if you're controlling your losses that tightly, unless, of course, you're taking those losses that often. Okay, so uh, there's a tip for you. If you happen to be in the minority, if you happen to be in the 6% that's limiting your losses uh, and still didn't make money, well, uh, that's, that's why. Okay, all right, for the other 94%, Hey, we're gonna, we've just shown you a practical of how to accomplish that, okay? For the other 94%, you can uh, look back over the last year and, and shoot if you had kept your wins, but your losses were down to 6% or less, you would have made money. And that's great. We're going to show you how to do even better. Okay, now Mark, Mike with the uh, married put position, okay, the stock, as the stock rises, of course, we're going to make money. As the stock falls, we can lose money, but not too much. There's an absolute floor. Mm -hmm. Now, what about this gap here between that floor and the break-even? Okay, uh, in the example that we just showed, that was six percent. Am I likely to actually take that full six percent loss? Not likely. Um, that six percent loss would typically only be realized if a few things happen. Number one, if you hold the stock all the way to the put expiration, which is five, six, seven months out in time, you make Am no I in charge of that? No, you, well, yes, you are in charge, I'm sorry, of how long you'll hold the position or if you're going to get in or get out or if you're you know, going to hold it all the way to expiration. Okay, uh, the second else? part of that occurring, of course, is if the stock is uh, still trading below the break even. And then the third part is if you make no adjustments. Right. Now, I have something to say about two of those. I mean, I, I, can, I can make adjustments, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just, just like that uh, income method number six, the riskless bear call spread trade. I can do that at any time, right? Uh, and, and I can also get out way before the uh, um, expiration happens. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the only thing I can't control is where the stock is going to go. But I'm in control of two out of the three factors that causes me to lose the whole 6%. So, I'm not going to lose the whole 6%. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, uh, but even so, if I was just doing that, that would have uh, done well for 94% of our participants today. Okay, 94% would have said, yes, I'm very happy with my trading results, or I'd be a darn sight happier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start there and let's even do better. Okay, the income methods reduce that gap. Mike, when we take a credit and we take a credit without risk, well, um, that kind of reduces that gap, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going right. to move it up. We're going to we're going to generate a credit and we're going to lower our maximum risk. We're going to move that bottom line, that bottom risk threshold, up and lessen it. Right. Okay. Now, Mike, uh, here's uh, the trading record with Altera. Okay. Uh, what happened was I got in at this place right here, and uh, I missed an opportunity. You ever do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I missed an opportunity right here to do a wonderful income method, and, and I just I just didn't see it. Uh, but uh, I, I I took advantage down here. I, I I put it into place here. Now, part of that involved selling calls. And what's got to happen as soon as I sell calls? Well, you generate premium. You lower that risk. What we refer to as income method number one. It's available in the sketch. You lower that risk. You generate some income. But at the same time, you're going to cap your gain. Right. The stock went up here way, way above. My, my uh, short calls were the $29 strike, and it went here up above $30. And uh, I'm thinking, geez, you know, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. But the fact is, Mike, that uh, it actually uh, wasn't a big deal because of the way that I had set up that trade. And in fact, I did one management technique right here uh, and did another spread trade. Now, both of these were riskless spreads. I placed a riskless spread here, and I uh, managed it and placed a second risk riskless spread here. And here's what happened. Uh, ended up getting out later on and getting out at a very uh, solid profit, okay? Never had more than 6% at risk on this day. Uh, well, where's my arrow? On this day, I was uh, bulletproof uh, forevermore, okay? So here's, uh, here's how that went, okay? On September 14th, um, I put together the position, okay, so that we have 6% uh, at risk. 
Okay. Now, on September 24th, uh, the stock was trading at 2850. It was right between $28 and $29, 2850. If I had done a covered call, and that's not what I did, but if I had done a covered call on that day, I would have generated 85 cents. Okay. Now, Mike, if I've got a net cost of 3085 and I sell uh, a $29 call, all right, uh, and generate 85 cents. Now, what is my new cost basis for the stock and the put? Are right, you there, Mike? Uh oh. I think I lost Mike. I'm going to ask folks online uh, am I still here? <laughs> I mean, can you still hear me? I see that there's a lot of questions. Mike may be occupied uh, answering those using the keyboard. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Oh, yep, 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 yep. Holy cow, lots of response. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Okay, so we'll just move on from here. Here's the deal, okay? Uh, I will collect 85 cents, and therefore my net cost base is, thanks, Anthony. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, my new net cost basis is going to be $30, okay? And the $30. Uh, I still have a guaranteed exit of 29 because that put option uh, in there. So now my risk is down to a buck. Okay. Now again, this is not what I did, but this is something that I could have done. I could have sold a covered call. This is what I called plain vanilla, uh, and it's what my copycats are doing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because uh, they are uh, copying the uh, setup of the married put that's in the money, and then selling calls against. Okay. Now, what if you wanted to keep the stock? On October 15th, on expiration Friday, uh, the stock was trading above $29. And because it was, uh, and, and uh, because there's a few hours left till expiration, okay, those calls were trading at 55 cents. So if you wanted to close the obligation, you'd have to spend 55 cents. So that's added back into the cost basis. So now it's thirty dollars and fifty-five cents. You still have that guaranteed exit of twenty-nine dollars. And do you have a better picture than before? Yeah. Your at-risk amount had been a dollar eighty-five. Now it's a dollar fifty-five. Okay. So we've reduced the risk. Mm -hmm. All right. And of course, there are more months uh, between uh, then. Oh, you're back, Mike. Good to hear. Uh, there's there's more months between here and uh, the expiration in March 2011. Gosh, we haven't even reached March uh, expiry, have we? No, sir. It's I mean, uh, for real. coming up this week. <laughs> oh, pardon. pardon me. Sorry, gang. Uh, I tried to cover the microphone and everything. But... Okay, so here's the deal. It isn't what I did. <laughs> I didn't do that. I did tell you that there were short calls at the $29 strike as part of my income method, but I actually got paid to hang on to the stock and to leave the upside open. Rather than having to pay out, I got paid. Okay, interesting, interesting. How can that be? Well, uh, here's what I actually did, Mike. Instead of selling a call mm -hmm. and then buying it back, I, I bought one call and sold two. You see, uh, when the stock is trading uh, at 28.50, and the $29 calls are trading at $0.85, cents, and sell, instead of selling one for every 100 shares of stock, I sold two. Now, what's wrong with that picture? Well, you are generating a premium, <laughs> but the problem is now you have 100 shares of stock, and you have two short calls. So one of those calls is naked, which carries with it an infinite upside risk. Right. Okay. But uh, using the proceeds from that, I used the proceeds and used part of it to buy one October $28 call. So now am I naked? Now can I get hurt if the stock goes up high? No. Now one of your two short shares is covered by your stock, and the other short contract, I should say, not shares, I apologize, the other sold contract is covered by the long call you purchased. Right. Okay. So now... Uh, I have a net credit. Now, Mike, if the stock goes down from uh, 28.50, if it goes down below 28 dollars, what are the consequences? Well, in this case, nothing. All calls would expire worthless, and you'd still keep the 25 cent net credit. Now, that is lower than the 85 cents you would have received just by selling the call, of course. But you don't have any risk or obligation if the stock stays below 28 dollars per share. 
Okay. What if it uh, stays flat? What if it stays at 2850 where, where it was when I did this move? Well, then your short calls, the, 29, the October 29 calls, I should say, are going to expire worthless. You won't have any obligations to deliver shares of stock. But your 28 call will still have 50 cents of value remaining. They'll still be in the money by 50 cents, so you'll still be able to sell to close those calls and pull in another 50 cent premium. Okay, and that's why I call it the money net because I'm going to catch some income. Okay, now there is a third alternative. The third alternative is if the stock closes above 29. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I know I know that everybody's anxious to find out what what the deal is with that. So let me go ahead and show what happened. Okay, uh, I did do this uh, uh, racial call spread. That's what I did. In fact, was sell two calls for every uh, hundred shares of stock, but then also buy one lower strike call and end up generating a credit. Okay, now that credit is set against the cost basis, okay, of the $30.85 for both the stock and the put. I still have the put in place. So now uh, my risk is $1.60, not $1.85. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're down from the original 6% at risk. That's one of the things that an income method does. And then here's what happened. On October 15th, while the stock was trading at about $29.40, I bought to close the $29 calls for 55 cents. Now when we add those together, okay, the cost base, the adjusted cost basis for the stock input Got and it. the man and the management that I'm paying here, okay, it's $31.15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I still have a guaranteed exit of 29 uh, and my new at risk amount is $2.15. Is that better? than the situation I had before, the at-risk amount of $1.85. No, it's more, isn't it, Kurt? You've, you've added risk in this position. This doesn't make sense. Well, that's, uh, that's how it appears on the surface, okay? But let's remember something, okay? All right, and yeah, here's the question. Uh, with just selling a covered call, we would take the $0.85 cent credit and then $0.55 cent buyback. We would still have a $0.30 cent credit, okay? But by doing the money net, I collected $0.25 cents on the front end and gave back the 55 So it looks like a $0.30 cent loss. Well, let's not forget, okay? <laughs> on September 24th, I bought a $28 call and sold two $29 calls. Mm -hmm. Okay. On October 15th, I bought to close one of those calls. So what remains? Well, you bought to close one of those calls. So now you still have one short call and you still have the long call that's in the money. Right. I've got a bull call spread and, and uh, the whole spread is in the money, isn't it? Correct. Okay, so what I've done here is I've purchased for a net of thirty cents. I've purchased a bull call spread that is closing. Uh, we're in the closing minutes of uh, of expiration Friday. All right, <coughs> and I've got a one dollar spread that's closing in the money. Is that cool or what? Mm -hmm. You see. Uh, one way you could look at it is I did a racial call spread. I bought one call. In and sold two. The other way you could look at it is because I've got stock, I sold a covered call and used the proceeds to finance my purchase of a bull call spread. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now by closing those, it turns out that I uh, still have a bull call spread in place by closing half of the shorts. So in the middle of the night, my broker looks and says, hmm, uh, well, the stock closed at 29.40, so uh, Kurt has the right to buy at 28, and uh, he exercises that right on my behalf. Okay, mm -hmm. and then he looks again and he says, "Well, Kurt also has an obligation to deliver at 29," and he also assigns those against. So what happens is, in the middle of the night, my my broker buys at 28 and sells at 29 and generates a dollar. So it's a total net of uh, 70 cent credit. You see, the stock went up, and I got paid to own it. 
70 cents. Pretty cool. If I had just done the plain vanilla covered call, if I uh, sold the call and then bought it back later on uh, in the exact same market and on the exact same days, I would have generated 30 cent credit. But in, in this case, I generated a 70 cent credit. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but Mike, I'm not doing this with 100 shares. I'm doing it with mm -hmm. 500. Could I do it with 1,000? Yes, it's scalable. Exactly. Okay. So here's the situation. Okay, I had the adjusted cost basis of thirty dollars sixty cents. I bought to close one of those calls, uh, so I end up with a cost basis of thirty one fifteen. And then in the middle of the night, my twenty eight slash twenty nine dollar bull call spread closes in the money, uh, which was a sure thing. It was going to definitely happen. All right. Uh, and so now I have a new cost basis of thirty dollars and fifteen cents. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Now the income methods reduce the gap. I've just reduced the gap by seventy cents. It had been at a dollar eighty-five. Now it's a dollar fifteen, and uh, uh, or less. What is it? Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mike, I'm going to do something else here. Is this okay with you? That's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do. I'm going to do the bulletproof vest. Now, just before I do, maybe I should uh, uh, run a uh, another poll. Do you remember this poll here, Mike? We shared the results. 94% would be happier if they had just limited their risk down to 6%. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and we we are just talking about keeping gains, not letting the gains run, but just keeping the gains. Let me ask, what's the dollar amount on that? Okay. Uh, the spectrum goes from. Uh, all the way from I can't see how that would even help to well I would have saved at least 300 bucks or I'd be ahead by a thousand to almost five thousand dollars or I'd be ahead by more than five thousand dollars or uh, some folks might recognize the truth that geez you know um, when that happens uh, I still have some money to play with you know I've got 94 of my hundred marbles uh, left at the bottom of the market okay Let's give it another three or four seconds. Two, one. Let's post those results. And uh, Mike, 57% would be ahead last year only mm -hmm. by a thousand to almost five thousand dollars. And there's there's more years of trading left. Yes. Yes, there are. What's our trading going to look like next year? <laughs> I hope for everybody in the line that you don't lose more than 6%, okay? Now, a third of the audience would have saved or made $5,000 or more. That's how much this information would have been worth to them uh, 12 months ago today. And, uh, well, it would be worth that to them today if they'd seen it 12 months ago. How's that? Mm -hmm. And then 9% could add minimal losses and uh, bought it at the bottom. Awesome. Okay, Mike, uh, here's what we're going to show now. I'm going to show the... Um, I'm going to show the bulletproof vest. Okay, here's what I did. Uh, true story. On uh, October 15th, the same day I did that management on Income Method Five, I also did Income Method Three, the bulletproof vest. Now, understand, I'm holding a March 2011 $29 put option, right? Correct. And its its value had been 350 when I bought it. Now, it's 252. Mm -hmm. Why why has the value come down? Well, we've the stock has moved up, and we've gone through some time. Right, the stock has uh, gone up, and so the put option has come down in value by ninety-eight cents. Now, along with it coming down ninety-eight cents, uh, Mike, I uh, I also gained seventy cents by doing the money net. Mm -hmm. So my net loss in this put option is only twenty-eight cents, right? Okay. Okay, so I've lost 28 cents in the in the put. In order for that to happen, the stock had to go up by oh two dollars. Right. So I'm okay with that. It had been 27.35. Now it's 29.40. So it went up two dollars and five cents for me to lose 28 cents. Okay, so that's one thing. But Mike, here's here's what also happened. The near term in the money puts also came down in value, which means that they were a bargain. Mm -hmm. and what I did was I swapped this. Now, there's only one reason why I would do income method number three, and that is because I'm trying to uh, not hold for any longer than a certain period of time, but I do want to hold through an event. What was happening was on November 2nd, 
Altera was going to have an earnings announcement, and that earnings announcement was going to affect Altera. I didn't know how. Okay, so uh, Mike, have I collected a debit or a credit for this? You're going to receive a credit of ninety cents for this transaction. Oh, okay. So that ninety cents is going to do away with my twenty-eight cent loss. Mm -hmm. What uh, What I'm doing here is collecting ninety cents to raise my guaranteed payout by a dollar. Oh, <laughs> how about that, uh, Roy? Who said genius before? I wonder what you think now, huh? Is that kind of cool? I invented this in 2003, trading it with uh, eBay. A lot of fun. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Okay, I've taken I've taken a credit, and um, uh, Roy likes it. He says it's great. Okay. Uh, what has happened now is my cost basis after income method number five was 3015, but now uh, what I've done is I've gotten a credit of 90 cents. So now my cost basis for the stock and the put, I still own a put, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. My new cost basis for the stock and put option is 2925. It's just a different put. In fact, the put is a $30 put. So now what is my risk amount? Well, the risk amount is, again, a negative 75 cents. You have a higher payout than your total cost into the position, so you're bulletproof. Very good. Okay, so being bulletproof, uh, am I going to be okay going into that earnings announcement? Am I going to sleep well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what I've done here is reduce the gap, the break-even, to less than zero. So now we're bulletproof. Okay. And um, uh, let me point something out. Okay, remember the original setup was 2735 plus 350 equals 3085. Remember, a lot of folks were thinking to themselves, Kurt, you can't make a dime until your stock goes to 3095. Mike, on October 15th, what what did I say the the stock was trading at when I did my management move and and my uh, income method three? Well, that we couldn't make a dime unless the stock was trading over thirty ninety five. Right, uh, but uh, but on October fifteenth, where the stock was, was twenty nine forty. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So by the time my stock had uh, touched only twenty nine forty, not only uh, had I made money, you know, I'm, I'm guaranteed to make seventy five cents a share, but I've still got an unlimited upside. I still can hold, and it can still make even more. Mm -hmm. And guess what? <laughs> After the earnings announcement, it did go up even further, and I ended up making three dollars and eighty-five cents a share because I held on while being bulletproof. So uh, it was nice to leave the upside open. This is the part about letting your winners run. Okay, cutting your losers short is where we started, but then after that, used the income methods to bulletproof so that we had no compunction about holding on and letting our winners run. I remember in the Marvel position, I was able to hold uh, and realize a 30% gain. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say uh, very quickly, and then with this slide, this kind of brings up the point of it. Thomas had asked a question. He brought in a question that uh, aren't your commissions greatly reducing your profits when you're using shares in these small amounts? And I replied to him uh, just with the, the typing here on the question pod is, well, first, you're only showing 100 shares in one contract because, to keep the math simple, I believe you actually did this with 500 shares. It is scalable. Number two, right. you just showed here how, and this, this brings it up, if you were just doing a standard covered call approach, which I believe 59% of our audience was looking at in this scenario, you'd still be buying stocks, and you showed that income method number five gained 133% more potential profit when it worked out than the covered call. Your commissions on a covered call trade would have been higher but just doing the plain vanilla covered call. Also, if you look at the credit spreads, for example, if you look at Iron Condors, you're paying into multi-leg contracts. So the idea is, oh, I'm paying commissions on a multi-leg entry, so let me increase my number of contracts. Well, now you're risking too much. Now you're over that one and a half, two percent of your total portfolio value with those higher contract sizes. So yeah, the commissions affect the net credit less, but you're taking on too much of a risk of your whole portfolio and on the position. So to us, what I've seen in my experience with radioactive trading over the past three years, and I am trading a smaller account and smaller position sizes, but the commissions don't affect my profits on the RPMs any more than they would with a covered call, with a naked put, especially if I'm adjusting the covered call or rolling the covered call. Standard collars, for example, credit spreads or debit spreads, 
it, it's a necessity. It has to be there. Does it affect it? Yes. Does it affect it more than the other standard options positions or option strategies? I don't think it does. That's correct. If, if you're going to uh, uh, sell a ratio call spread or if you're going to sell a cover call, the commissions are the same, at least with uh, my broker, which happens to be Options Express. Uh, most, most brokers that allow spread trades don't, uh, don't rape you. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. What else have we got here? Will this only work? Will this work for uh, index spreads? Yes, it will. Uh, will this only takes... work for long stock, or can it be done in long calls? Uh, we discourage that, um, and uh, Byron, we discourage that, and I would say, yeah, stick with the long stock. Okay, uh, Mike, let me get back to the flow here. Mm -hmm. uh, I cashed in my stock at 33.10, okay, and made 12% in six weeks while never having more than 6% at risk. Right. Okay. I was guaranteed a return well before the stock hit the so-called break-even point. Okay, if 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 the the cost of the stock and the put was thirty eighty-five, mm -hmm. thirty dollars and eighty-five cents is supposed to be my break-even. But gosh, because of uh, number one, the income method adjustments, and number two, uh, because of the phenomenon that the stock gains in value much more quickly than the put can possibly lose in value, because of those phenomena. Uh, I was uh, actually not just bulletproof, but guaranteed a return before it hit the break even. Okay. Um, so, uh, being bulletproof going into earnings makes for great nights of sleep. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to run another poll here, Mike, and then uh, we'll open it up to questions, okay? Uh, let me just uh, ask uh, actually two poll questions and very fast, okay? What two things do you like the most? Uh, about what we've shared here today, okay? Uh, do you like the idea of, of beginning with very low risk in case you're wrong on a trade? Uh, do, do you like the idea of adjusting your risk and taking income at the same time? Do you like the possibility of being bulletproof and still laying it right? I did that with both of these trades with the, uh, uh, with, um, what do you call it, with Marvel at the beginning. Adjusted my risk, made myself bulletproof, and still let it ride. And of course, with Altera, uh, do you like the idea of taking income by way of spread trades that introduce no risk? I showed three spread trades that were completely riskless and gave a uh, credit. Uh, or do you like the idea that, uh, geez, out of out of uh, the ten, I only showed you three. There's seven more. <laughs> Is that a cool thing? Okay, let's give it a few few more seconds here. I think our most popular option is uh, bulletproof. You know what, guys? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close it short. I know that um, uh, everybody wants a chance to vote, but we're just running short on time. Let me share this. Nine out of ten like like the possibility of being bulletproof and still letting your trade ride, and a tie for second place, opportunity to adjust risk and take income, and of course the fact that you can take income by way of spread spread trades that because of the context, they don't introduce any risk at all. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. Okay, and then a final poll. What do you want to know more about next? Come on, don't be shy. Okay, let's give that just another five seconds is all because I want to make this really fast. Five, four, three, let your voice be heard. Two, one, and zero. Blast off. Okay. Let's hear the offer for the blueprint. We actually had that up to uh, over 50% at one point. And uh, second place is how, how can I trade radioactively with a large portfolio? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Okay, 11% say I have the blueprint, what now? I would say use your support, okay? Right now, if, if you're having difficulty understanding any principle or precept that's in the blueprint, uh, part of your purchase is free support. Go ahead and write to Mike or me at uh, support at radioactivetrain.com uh, for further explanation. Now, we're not going to counsel you on every single move that you do in the market. That would be a different service, okay? 
Uh, but uh, as far as uh, understanding what kind of positions that you're in uh, and, and what kind of um, uh, tools you might be using, uh, we can certainly help you with that. Okay? All right. Let me go ahead and hide that and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, show the offer for the blueprint. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, first of all, Mike, uh, the benefits uh, go like this. Number one, it's an overlay onto whatever trading you already do. Uh, you have a completely different philosophy for selecting stocks than I do. Also, a different time frame tolerance. Okay, but mm -hmm. that's okay because radioactive trading still works for you. It, it works for uh, it's it's not really a trading system. It's more of a money management system. Okay, uh, the fact that your losses are controlled from the beginning. Okay, uh, you are you can bulletproof yourself, and the fact that it's scalable. Okay, rather than doing 100 shares, you can do 500 shares. Rather than 500, you do 1,000 shares. Okay. All right. Here's the offers. Okay, what you get, what it'll cost, and what you risk. Um, here's what to do right now. <laughs> Go to radioactivetrade.com. Um, if you want to see income method number three in greater detail and depth, okay, what you could do is pick up a uh, uh, CD called Profits with Puts, and it's a two-hour-long seminar. Talks about income method three and bonus income method number four ways to uh, lock in a profit and have zero risk and still uh, unlimited upside potential. Um, the money nets, those are income methods number five and six. You can capture more premium with them than with a plain vanilla covered call if certain uh, conditions happen. All right. And uh, the blueprint, and the best part is, is you can leave your upside open. You can't do that with a covered call. Okay. Um, the blueprint, of course, has got all ten income methods. Okay, so this is income method three and four. This is income method uh, five and six. The blueprint's got one through ten. Okay, uh, the the webinar CDs are eighty nine dollars a piece. So profit with puts eighty nine bucks. The minus webinar eighty nine bucks. Okay, and uh, with the uh, oh, and there's a money back guarantee on everything. Okay. The blueprint is our magnum opus. It's 3.39, and uh, we had a number of folks uh, say uh, that uh, uh, this year they they could have saved or made 5,000 or more. Right? Well, uh, what has the free education that we've shown today meant to us? Uh, doing Altera, if we had just done covered calls, right, that would have been uh, 85 cents uh, in minus 55 cents when we uh, uh, manage the call to, to hold it. Okay, so that'd be a thirty cent mm -hmm. premium. Okay, times five contracts equals a dollar fifty capture premium. But in fact, uh, what I showed with the income method number five was uh, picking up seventy cents total premium and getting to keep the stock. Uh, so that's uh, three fifty. All right, three fifty is less than what the blueprint costs. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you could use it over and over. Hey, okay, what else? Uh, I took a 90 cent credit to make my stock bulletproof and still hold it. So with five contracts times 90 cents, that's $450. Okay, that'd pay for another blueprint. And of course, uh, uh, after that, uh, after the stock went up, uh, I ended up with 1840 uh, because I had the moxie, the guts, to hold that stock through. The earnings announcement. Mm -hmm. I had the guts because there's no way I could possibly lose. And uh, could you do this again and again? Of course you could. Okay. So again, what to do right now? Go to radioactivetrading.com. Uh, you might want to pick up one of those CDs, or uh, I highly recommend just getting the blueprint. The blueprint has all ten income methods uh, with explanations. So, uh, Mike, uh, how are we doing on time? We're 26 minutes over. Oh my goodness, we're past time. Okay, well, uh, I should probably um, wind her up. <laughs> Is there any questions that we didn't get to that, that are really, uh, really... Well, some of the common ones that came up, of course, are can this be used on ETFs? And of course it can. You've traded these on the ETFs, and you can use the Power Options tools to screen specifically uh, for RPMs just on the indexes, ETFs, and holders that appear to the standard stocks. Um, in addition to that, um, of course, if you think we're at a bearish market, you can use the Power Options tools to identify RPMs on inverse ETFs where you can apply the same techniques on securities that might be moving up as the market falls in price. And uh, of course, 
the other question that came in was, what about bearish positions? Well, there's two approaches. One, if you entered into an RPM and the stock falls once you open it, of the 10 income methods, a few of them work if the stock has fallen, a few of them work if the stock stagnates, and then the others work, of course, if the stock is moving up in price. So you can adjust those, reduce your risk, even if the stock's falling, if it's stagnating, or if it's moved up in price. Very good. Uh, Mike, the last question I'd like to ask is, is uh, would, would you all like to make a trade that's bulletproof from the beginning? Uh, a purchase of options education material from radioactive trading is bulletproof, okay, because we take on all the risk. If you, if you pick up the blueprints or uh, any of those CDs today, if you decide that uh, afterwards, man, this isn't for me, just send it back and uh, uh, we pay you back. <laughs> we pay you back the purchase price. So uh, if you go to radioactivetrain.com, there's a couple of free bonuses too. I don't have time to talk about them, but, uh, but you, you'll be able to take a look at the free bonuses if you go to radioactivetrain.com on the products page. And uh, with that, Mike, I've got another appointment to get to. I've got to get. Okay. So, uh, yeah, thank you for your time today, and uh, thank you, everybody, for yours. And um, I hope to see you out there. Uh, again, if you already own the blueprint, use your support. And if you don't, um, I recommend that you pick it up and, and then use your support. Uh, we're available to you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, happy trading, all. Thanks again, Mike, and we'll see you all out there. Take care.